Good morning and happy Easter. We welcome all to our historic Cathedral Basilica as we joyfully celebrate the solemnity of our Lord's resurrection. All visitors and newcomers are asked to kindly fill out our special welcome envelope found in your pew. Please place your completed envelope in today's collection basket. Also in your pew is an Easter flower remembrance envelope to care for our beautiful Easter flowers, music, and environment. Our Easter collection supports the training of our diocesan seminarians, deacon candidates, and lay ministers. Kindly be generous in providing for the education of those who will serve us in our parishes. Please be generous. As we prepare for our solemn Easter celebration, I invite you to introduce yourself to the people seated around you and to share your name with those you've never met. Please join me in singing our opening hymn, number 457.
the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Happy Easter! Come on, fire up, it's Easter. Okay? Don't be down in the dumps. Christ is risen from the dead and has given life to even those in the tombs. So this is a joyful celebration. <laughs> and we give thanks to God for the great gift of new life that is given to all of us. The hope for heaven. He opens the gates of heaven for us and he deals with our sin through his crucifixion and then he breaks sin through his resurrection. And so let's call to mind God's mercy which endures forever, which is eternal, his love, his amore for us. And let us ask the Lord's mercy that we might be given courage and hope to continue our pilgrimage to paradise. <laughs> you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You were sent you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kindly be seated. <laughs> Monsignor Jerry and my sisters and brothers in baptism of St. Anthony Cathedral Basilica Community, I joyfully present to you our parishioners, Carlos and Anna, who asked the church to baptize their daughter. Usually at this point I would inquire uh, if I did not know uh, 
the parents uh, whether or not they were adequately prepared to uh, raise uh, their child uh, as a Catholic and follow Christ. Uh, but I know them very, very well. Uh, they are very good parishioners. They're here every single Sunday and they have three beautiful girls, so I don't have to ask them. Hmm? Uh, now the godparents, let's see here. I can't see that far. I don't know you very well. Now you're gonna help these uh, 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 Carlos and Anna in raising this beautiful girl? Yes, sir. Okay, how about the other one there? Yes, sir. Huh? You better yell. Yes, sir. I'm getting old. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and well, An Carlos and Anna, or Anna and Carlos, what uh, name do you give to your child? Diana Dolores. Yeah, that mustn't be working, that microphone, huh? Siena Dolores. Now we got some uh, juice cooking there. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, Chiana Dolores. And what do you ask the church for your child? Baptism. Baptism. Huh? Baptism. That's right. Huh? Huh? Siena. And so with the, relying on the help of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, uh, we joyfully... Uh, Welcome Siana Dolores for the gift of baptism. What do you think, people? <laughs> I now trace on Siana Dolores' uh, forehead the as a sign of the cross, which consigns her or addresses her to, uh, to Jesus. And I ask her mommy and daddy to do the same thing. And her godparents, sponsors. And the deacon. And also her sisters. Hmm? Yeah, okay, very good. Let us stand and, and sing our great Alleluia as we bring Siana Dolores into our church. pray with Easter joy. O oh God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death, and unlocked for us the path to eternity. Grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection 
may through the eternal renewal brought by your Holy Spirit rise up in joy in the light of life through our Lord Jesus Christ your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, if then you were raised with Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above and not what is on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ your life appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. Very early when the sun had risen on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb. They were saying to one another, who will roll back the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back. It was very large. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were utterly amazed. He said to them, Do not be amazed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, the crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him, but go and tell his disciples and Peter, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him as he told you. The Gospel of the Lord.
We welcome all to our historic Cathedral Basilica as we come to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And in a particular way, we're so happy that we have uh, all of our family gathering together at Easter time and uh, all of, of their relatives and also all of our friends and visitors. And we invite all those who are visiting from other places, other parishes, other cities, other communities, and even other countries just to stand on this Easter uh, to receive our loving, joyful welcome. All of our visitors, just stand for a few seconds. We will not bite you. <laughs> Wonderful to have you here. At the end of the Mass, we'll have a special blessing for all of our visitors and all those who will be traveling during the coming week, that you might travel in safety. Hmm? And on the, on the plaza, there is a special welcome stand for our visitors, and there's a special gift for you. Huh? Well, once again, Happy Easter to everyone. Are you happy? Yes. Okay, good. Are you wo woken up already? I mean, come on. You know, it's uh, you know, 25 past, 25 past uh, 12, okay? So you probably slept in a little bit, right? Okay, a little. So, so let's have some energy because it is Easter, huh? And throughout all the world, every single Christian, <laughs> should be filled with joy. Absolutely filled with joy because Christ is risen. Mm -hmm. He is truly risen. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you would go uh, uh, to uh, Mexico, you would hear uh, Feliz Pascua. Mm -hmm. Huh? Right? Mm -hmm. Yes, Mexico. Yeah. If you went to, uh, went to Italy, you would hear uh, Bon Park. <laughs> uh, if you went to uh, even Russia, you would find uh, uh, Christos Voskres. If you go to Poland, you would hear Wisłego Alleluia. You go to France, you would hear Bon Park. In every language, in every place, there's excitement and joy about Jesus' resurrection. You know, when I think about when I think about uh, Easter, I go back to when I was a child, and across the street from my house uh, were the Crawfords. They were Presbyterian. So my, my house was uh, in the Boston area. Next door to my house was, a, was a, a, a Methodist church, right next door to my house. Down the street, just a little bit, was a, a Jewish synagogue. And, and my family was the one entrusted to uh, uh, put the lights on and off in the Jewish synagogue when it came time for Shabbat, okay? Uh, we got a buck a piece every time we put them on, every time they put up. That was, a, that was a good job to have, I want to let you know, just to flip a switch, <laughs> okay? And our Jewish brothers and sisters uh, uh, invited us in all the time uh, for their Passover. Mm -hmm. uh, and across the street uh, was the, our Presbyterian uh, neighbor, uh, the Crawfords. And he had a very interesting thing. And I do not know to this very day how he did it, but he did it. Okay. Now, I, I forgot my, uh, my handkerchief. Does anybody else use those anymore? You do. Is it clean? I mean, is it clean? I mean, you're a doctor. I want it clean. <laughs> okay, it's sterile. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. 
So Mr. we would go over to Mr. Crawford's house and he would take his handkerchief out of his pocket. It was always clean, okay? And he would take it apart and then he would, I do not know how to do it, so I'm not gonna do it for you. Okay. He would make this handkerchief into a bunny. Don't ask me how. It is still one of the mysteries of the world to me. Okay. And then he put the little bunny on the ground and he'd be away from it and son of a gun, that thing hopped. <laughs> that was before I was drinking. I was just a little boy, you know? I was just a little boy. And I could not, and he would do it every Easter. Mm -hmm. And you know then what he would say? And if you think that's spectacular, Think about Jesus rising from the dead. He was giving me that Presbyterian, my catechism. <laughs> That's what he was doing. Yeah? And I think that in my neighborhood, I got to respect all different religions yeah? because we were like the United Nations of religions in my, in my neighborhood. And so, as we come together from so many different places and you know so many different experiences we listen to today's gospel and today's gospel is very very interesting because it tells us that they went to the tomb and they're discussing these women i want to know where the men were I think they were hiding because if you remember what happened to the men, they all ran away, except for John. Remember that, guys, okay? Who was at the cross? Uh, a teenager, a male teenager, that was John. And then the women. <laughs> the women didn't give up, okay? The women are going to the tomb in today's gospel. Women are tough. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right, husbands? Right? They're tough. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? You falling asleep? Do we have to sing a song? Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. And what happens is they're discussing, you know, we may be strong, but we're not going to be able to move that tomb, that, that, that stone. They worried about that stone. They said, how can we move that great big huge stone? And when they got there, the stone was already moved. That hit me. It's the first time in my long and many years as a priest that I focused in on the stone for Easter. Thank you, Lord, for giving me new insight. Jesus comes to us when we are carrying our burdens. What kind of stone do you have on your back that you're carrying? What kind of burden do you have <laughs> in your life? What kind of heavy, heavy experience that you are bearing in your life? Not just bearing, but also the small things that get into your shoes. <laughs> you ever had a stone in your shoe? Hmm? And make you limp 
through life. Today, Jesus rises from the dead to remove our stones, to give us hope. Jesus breaks uh, sadness and brokenness, and Jesus gives us hope. And how does he do it? He says, I love you this much that I will take all your stones and I will absorb them in my crucifixion and then I will lighten your burden with the hope that life does not end in death. That life is promised for all eternity to us. Just think about those stones that you have in your life. Everybody's got them. Maybe the little kids haven't. But I think every one of us has those burdens in our life. And Jesus comes out of love and takes every single one of them to, our, to himself and wants to move them. I'm taking this now from, from about three hours ago, three, four hours ago, uh, from what the Pope said. And here's what he says. Christ's resurrection is our hope for the world. And that hope will not disappoint us. Carlos and Anna, <laughs> Drill that into your girls. <laughs> the resurrection of Jesus is our hope. And when we are down and we're just kind of like feel like in the back, our back pocket, his hope can make us hop. <laughs> his hope can do miracles. There's all kinds of contemporary forms of heavy burdens, of bondage, of slaveries. And the fruit, the fruit of the resurrection is hope for us. It's, it's the hope for peace. Don't we have hope for peace? But we need more hope for peace, especially in a very, very tense world <laughs> where we're, we're on the cusp of a new arms race, huh? The fruit of hope for, the uh, for reconciliation. Just think in your own family about the people in your family that are you know, in need of reconciliation with you or other family members. Hmm? Hope for dialogue. That human beings would speak to human beings and stop barking at one another and stop being polarized. <laughs> you know? Hope for healing. How many of us in our families and among our friends have loved ones and people we really care about with cancer? That hope for healing. Or how many of us have people with mental illness, you know, in our families or addictions in our families? We have to have hope for healing. Hope for consolation, to just be able to sit back and say, I know that the Lord will not disappoint me and I am consoled. Hope after, after your loved one, your spouse dies, 
or your child passes away unexpectedly, to be consoled, to be soothed by hope. Hope for wisdom in our world. Wisdom among our leaders so that our world would be safe and full of life instead of threats of death and destruction. Mm -hmm. God's love in his cross and in his resurrection comes to lift our burdens, our stones, and help us to take them out of our lives and have hope. Your little girl right now, she has everything provided for her. But every time that I baptize a child, you know what I say to myself? What will this child encounter in their life? Huh. And then as I pour the water over the child's head, I say, Lord, I know you love them. Give them strength and hope to endure whatever they will have to endure. Huh? And that's why we, today, on Easter Day, can cry out, Alleluia! The Lord is risen! He takes our burdens and he takes our cross and he gives us hope. So Anna and, uh, and Carlos, please bring your beautiful daughter uh, to the center so that we can pray for her and pray for you that you always know that God loves you so much that he grants to you eternal life. And God parent sponsors, you always stand right behind them. They need your support and your help. My brothers and sisters, let's stand and pray on this beautiful Easter day in thanksgiving to God for the gift of the resurrection. For the Easter joy of our church, the newly baptized and newly initiated, for the peace of our world, an end to terrorism and concord in Syria, the Holy Land, and Asia, for the unity of Christians, the Jewish people who celebrated Passover, and all God's people, for a deepening of our faith and commitment to the new evangelization. Hear our Savior, hear our prayer. prayer. Hear our Savior, hear our prayer. For inactive Catholics, that they may return to Mass and the sacraments. For the reverence and defense of all human life and religious liberty for widows, orphans, the elderly, unemployed, immigrants, refugees, our troops, marriages and families who find life burdensome, for the sick and suffering, the poor and powerless. Hear our Savior, hear our prayer. Hear our Savior, hear our prayer. For vocations to the priesthood, permanent diaconate, 
religious life, and service of our church. For non-Catholics who wish to learn more about our Catholic faith, for the resurrection of all our beloved dead and the comfort of all who grieve, for our Easter visitors, for the baptism of Siana, travelers, and our own silent intentions. Hear our Savior, hear our prayer. Hear our Savior, hear our prayer. Father, hear our prayer, and through the glorious merits of your Son's death on the cross and his resurrection, free Sienna, Dolores, from all stain of original sin, and make her your adopted child through water and the Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the church said? Amen. My brothers and sisters in baptism, and so that Sianna might be baptized because she can't speak yet. Hmm? We're called to help the parents speak for her as they train her in following Jesus Christ in the church. And so we renew our baptismal vows with them. And so I ask you, Anna and Carlo, and my brothers and sisters in baptism, do you reject Satan and all his empty promises and all his devious deeds? Do you believe in God the Father, Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, descended into death, rose on the third day, ascended into heaven, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the world to come? This is our joyful Easter faith, the baptismal faith of our brothers and sisters all over the world, and we are proud to profess it and pass it on to Siena in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Kindly be seated as Sienna Dolores comes to the waters of baptism. Bring that water. Sienna Dolores, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Oh, okay, bring her up, because this is my God. This is Oops, we'll get that later.
as Christ was anointed priest, prophet, and king. So I anoint you, Sienna Dolores, with the chrism of salvation, that as priest you might offer prayer and sacrifice with Jesus every single weekend in the church. That as a prophet you might speak God's holy word with your life and with your lips. And that as a citizen of the kingdom, you might have the right to eternal life in the joys of heaven. Lift her up, lift her up. Sienna Dolores, see in this white garment your Christian dignity. With your parents and godparents' sponsors and all your relatives and the entire Christian community, keep this white garment free from all stain of sin until that great day when the Lord comes at the end of your earthly journey to bring you to your heavenly home. Christ is the light of the nations, and in Christ there is no darkness. We entrust to you, Anna and Carlos, this light of Christ. Keep it burning brightly and pass it on to your daughter so that she may always walk in the light of the Lord. My brothers and sisters in baptism, I present to you the newest parishioner of our Cathedral Basilica community and our newest sister in baptism in the Christian community, uh, Sienna Dolores. Hmm? <laughs> Kindly stand and receive the, the refreshing water of your baptismal renewal, which you just professed with Sienna Dolores and the entire church.
We now invite our children to bring their gifts for Jesus and place them in the basket at the foot of the altar. Also, please join me in singing hymn number 454.
Pray, my sisters and my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours might be acceptable to God, our almighty Father. Joyful with Easter gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with Easter joy, Every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Blessed be Jesus, whom you sent to be the friend of children and of the poor. He came to show us how we can love you, Father, by loving one another. He came to take away sin, which keeps us from being friends, and hate, which makes us all unhappy. He promised to send the Holy Spirit to be with us always, so that we can live as your loving people. God our Father, we ask you to send your spirit upon these gifts to make them holy, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The night before he died, Jesus, your son, showed us how much you love us. When he was at supper with his disciples, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Again, he gave you thanks and praise. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. And so, loving Lord, we remember that Jesus died and rose again to save the world. He put himself into our hands to be the sacrifice we offer you. Lord our God, listen to our prayer. Send the Holy Spirit to all of us who share in this meal. May the Spirit bring us closer together in the family of the Church with Francis our Pope, Curtis our Bishop, all those baptized and received into the church this day and all your people. Remember, Father, our families and our friends and all those we do not love as we should. Remember those who have died. Bring them home to be with you forever. Gather us all together in your kingdom. There we shall be happy forever with the Virgin Mary, the Mother of God and our Mother with her all good and holy husband Joseph, the blessed apostles Peter and Paul, the martyrs, Saint Anthony, and all the saints. There all the friends of Jesus the Lord will sing a song of joy. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. We believe that the most blessed sacrament of the altar is the true and full presence of Jesus Christ, his body, blood, soul, and divinity. As Catholics who are in a state of grace come to Holy Communion, those of other faiths are also invited to approach the altar with hands over their hearts and pray with the priest for the unity of all God's people. Please join us in singing hymn number 458.
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O oh God, with unfailing love and favor, so that, renewed by the Easter's mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Please pray for all who have been newly initiated into the life of Christ in our Catholic Church this Easter, and another special congratulations to Sienna and the Hernandez family. Faith Formation continues this Wednesday at 5.45 p.m. Next Sunday's Feast of Divine Mercy will be solemnly celebrated at our 12 noon Mass, followed by Eucharistic Adoration until 3 p.m. From 1 p.m. to 3 p.m., all are urged to adore our Eucharistic Lord in our Cathedral Basilica, view the acclaimed film, A Time for Mercy, and enjoy light refreshments in our center. The solemn chanting of the Divine Mercy Chaplet in Benediction will take place at 3 p.m. Veneration of the relics of St. Faustina and St. John Paul II will follow Benediction. Kindly see today's bulletin for more information. On Friday, April 6th at 7.30 p.m., our Soul of the City concert series will present the Apollo String Chamber Players in our Cathedral Basilica. Admission is free. Please see our bulletin insert for details. In observance of Easter, our Cathedral Basilica Chapel and Office will reopen this Tuesday. Before leaving, kindly tidy up our pew for the next Mass. And while I have the mic, I'd like to make a quick impromptu announcement. For those of you who know me, my name is Stephen Junius. I've been in the church for about 20 years. You guys may know my mom and brother, Margaret and Mitchell. They usually are Eucharistic ministers here. But unfortunately, my brother was sick today. So if you guys could say a, a prayer for him so that he can uh, recover. But I've been out of Mass for the past two months, and that's unusual for me. But the reason behind that is, as you can see, my wife is turning Easter pink because she didn't know I was going to do this. This is my, this is our very first child. We were very blessed to have a beautiful baby girl. Come on up, Lila. This is my wife, Lila, by the way, in case you guys haven't <laughs> met her. But this is our beautiful daughter and our future sister in Christ, Scarlett Lucila Junius. And I also want to congratulate her because she was very good this Mass, so you guys will definitely be seeing her soon again. Well, congratulations. You know, he works for the News Channel, so he's used to being gone on the... Uh, on camera. Yeah. I can't, I can't remember whether it's six or 12. What one? 12. What's your favorite one, 12? 12. Okay, that's right. We invite all those who are visiting with us and all those who be traveling to kindly stand and receive a special blessing. And also, uh, we will ask God's blessing upon our newly baptized. Huh? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he let his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with kindness and grant you safety and Easter joy in your travels. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with all of you. And through the prayers of the Holy Mother of God, together with all the saints, especially our patron, St. Anthony. May the Lord bless us, the Father, 
the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ, alleluia, alleluia. Have a fantastic Easter afternoon, and uh, thank you to all of our uh, uh, choir and uh, to Abby. It's like being in uh, St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York City.